So let's take a step back and understand laziness by changing curly into a lazy language while still using the eager version of plate. So we will not be relying on laziness at the plate level. That is, we're going to have a, a language that still has numbers uh, and identifiers and plus and times and lambda and application, but the rules of evaluation are going to change so that when a function call is made to a function that doesn't use its argument, then the argument expression is never evaluated. In this case, it would be an error to add one to a function, but because x is never used, uh, we just return three instead. Meanwhile, uh, lambda x dot x does use its argument, so that would trigger the error. It would force the evaluation of the argument expression. We'll still have let in our language, even though I didn't put it in the grammar, uh, but the thing to remember is that let just desugars into lambda. So this expression right here that produces a zero is the same as the first example above. To make that a little more concrete, here is our interpreter in the eager language. It's not what we want right now because we want to be able to add that kind of test case. We're going to add a test case where we have interp of parse of let x be something bad, like one applied to two, um, in a body that returns three. And we want this to return three and not get an error. That is, we want to take this expression and turn it into a new test case where the answer is not an error but is instead num3. That is our goal to make this test pass along with all the other tests that we're already passing. Right now this new test will fail because we get an exception but, um, but we want to make it work. And we already know one way to do this. The first way we can do this is change it to, to lazy and now that test will pass. But that's not what we want. We want to implement laziness ourselves, staying in the eager version of plate. So we rule out option one, but let's remind ourselves one more time why option one works. It works because plate lazy delays the evaluation of this interp call until the time, if ever, that uh, some other expression looks up this binding in the environment. So option two then to implement it ourselves means explicitly delaying the argument interpretation. That is, we can change the interp here to some delay where we implement delay as a record that just saves the argument and its environment for interpreting later. That is, we have a new kind of record called a thunk which has that argument and environment in it and we change our environment so that it maps names not to values but instead to thunks. So when we extend the environment in a function call, we put a delay in there. The only time this delay is ever seen is when we have an identifier expression and we look in the environment. So that means that after we get a result from lookup, it's going to be a thunk instead of a value, and we need to force the evaluation through this new function force that we write. The function force is going to take a thunk and just use interp. Um, that thunk has an expression and an environment inside of it, and so we can just pass those on to interp to get a value to return for the ID expression. So that's what we have in the lazy.racket interpreter. You can see that it's implemented in regular eager plate. Uh, we have thunks, we have bindings that map names to thunks, and if we go down to our tests, then we have that test that we just wrote in the other interpreter, the one where we have an error bound to x, but we don't use x, so we get a 3 out. When we run our test, this test now passes. And this means that we have implemented laziness ourselves, since we're still running in an eager version of plate.